Hello everyone, my name is Priyam Vadha Kameshwar. I am a graduate student of the University of Delhi and I am presenting a poster titled Observational Constraints on the Possibility that Sterile Neutrinos Cause Anti-Gravity. Here is a glimpse of my conference poster. So, we start with the standard model of particle physics which gives out three flavors of neutrinos. Some theories beyond the standard model predict the existence of a sterile neutrino which emerged to explain the small masses of neutrinos. Sterile neutrinos are said to interact via gravity. We put forth a model that proposes a repulsive gravity being generated from sterile neutrinos. The motivation behind this idea is mainly supernovae. More number of stars are existent in the late time universe, especially the massive ones. This leads to a copious amount of neutrinos being produced both by stellar processes as well as by supernovae explosions. And if sterile neutrinos do cause anti-gravity, their greater flux would imply acceleration of the expansion of universe in late times. In lieu of this repulsive gravity, we introduce a negative gravitational constant which we denote by minus g prime. g prime itself is greater than zero, associated with the sterile neutrinos. The cosmological constant lambda is eliminated and g prime and t mu nu s nu are put in its place, t mu nu s nu being the stress energy tensor associated with the sterile neutrinos. Our goal now is to constrain the value of this unknown parameter g prime. We start with the modified Einstein field equations. The left hand side is familiar, so is the first term on the right. The last term is that which has replaced lambda g mu nu. Notice the negative sign in front of g prime. We can then write the pair of equations called the Friedman, Lemaitre, Robertson, Walker equations in a modified manner that give the scale factor evolution. On simplification of these equations, we derive a very important conditional. We see that in order to obtain a positive value of Hubble parameter H0, we must have an open universe. Two cases are considered here, the first of very light sterile neutrinos and second massive sterile neutrinos. Correspondingly, we solve for A of t using the FLRW equations for both these cases and plug it in the given relation that gives us the radial distance r as a function of the redshift z for the two cases. So the two expressions are given here, k0 and k1 and in the next case k2 and k3 are some constants used to simplify these expressions. We can thus calculate the distance modulus m minus capital M. The correctness of the theory is then analyzed by comparing against observational data of type 1a supernovae. Different combinations of the Hubble parameter h0 and the unknown or free parameter g prime by g into omega s nu zero was studied and the goodness of fit with respect to observed data was estimated using weighted least square minimization. Here is the table of values giving different possible combinations. You may notice that the range of h naught is in accordance with both sides of the Hubble tension story. The low value of around 67 is closer to CMB predicted values and that around 73 is from recent results. I have given a couple of plots here. The blue dots are the values calculated using our model. The red ones with error bars are from the catalog. We see that the curves fit very well for both the extremes of H0 values and in both light as well as massive sterile neutrino cases. I'd like to summarize at this juncture. We started out by assuming that sterile neutrinos caused repulsive gravity, which was represented by a negative gravitational constant minus g prime, and analyzed the model by drawing a comparison with observational data. The data was fitted according to best fit of the free parameter. We saw from the plots that quite satisfactory results were obtained, indicating that repulsive gravity from sterile neutrinos could be a plausible explanation for late-time acceleration of the universe. So the future scope or the way forward is to fine-tune the theory. With advancing technologies, there will be a greater number of observations and improved sensitivity of instruments, which will lead to more accurate constraints on the cosmological parameters. One could also find applications of the theory in both astrophysical as well as cosmological problems and scenarios. Thank you for your patience throughout the video.